peoples of Australia their unbroken ties to Aboriginal law, culture and customs. We respect the traditional owners of the lands and waters we inhabit and acknowledge their elders past and present. We celebrate the enrichment of Aboriginal communities around Australia. We recognise the lasting impact of colonisation and dispossession. We salute those who have fought for the rights of First Peoples. Their legacy is our guiding light today and always. I can't take it anymore! Good afternoon, good evening, good day and good morning, Blurtsters, wherever you are around the world. You are listening to the new Blurt. You absolutely are listening to the new Blurt. Uh, good evening, uh, afternoon or morning, wherever you are listening to the new Blurt. Uh, hi, I am Keely, aka the Kegstar, and tonight I'm coming to you from Wurundjeri country of Kulin Nation of the Wurundjeri people. Uh, Southern Tube is never ceded, always has been, and always will be Aboriginal land. Uh, we have an incredibly awesome show for you tonight, and it is absolutely chockers. But before I go any further, I just wanted to mention that last week's show, unfortunately, was uh, a little bit of a disaster from an IT perspective. So uh, we won't have a pod on that show uh, available for a little while, but I'll see what I can suck out of it. There's little bits I might be able to cut out um, in the near future, near future, and uh, I will do that at some stage, but it'll take a little while. But this potty will be out before that one will be, just letting you know. Um, but it will happen, but it just will take a little bit of time. i like to mention that today is Purple Day, and uh, we'll have a little bit more of a chat about that very, very soon. The Paralympics starts tomorrow at about... Uh, 6 p.m. our time in Melbourne, I think it is, 6 p.m., between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. or something, the um, uh, so the uh, opening ceremony is. And uh, what we'll do is I'll get Wentzy to put the link to the ABC uh, site that tells you all about the classifications in the Paralympics, which you might find um extremely um interesting and you might yeah extremely interesting and also you might be able to follow on from those classifications when you watch a sport and they say you know this is a t1 this is t1 this person's t3 or whatever anyway this site's a really good one and it uh, tells you all about the classes eh, classifications and um how you can watch the paralympics and really enjoy it and understand it at the same time um, we're going to talk about uh, Harris or Trump. What do Aussies think? Do we even care? Making your hamburger less uh, bad for the planet. Yes, believe it or not, hamburgers are very, very bad for the planet because um, beef isn't very good for the planet. I know there's a lot of meat eaters out there that won't like to hear that, but it's true. But um, if they could make a hamburger that uh, tasted exactly like uh, your beloved beef, but uh, you didn't need to kill a cow for it, well, would that be a good thing? I mean, do you have to just keep killing things for the sake of it? I think not. New pedestrian bridge to open up uh, across the Brisbane River. Once you'll be on that one. Uh, also, we've got the Telegram messaging app. The CEO of uh, the Telegram uh, app arrested in France. Why was he arrested? We'll have a look at that as well. On pole position, we'll check out where Kamala Harris is. That's, oh, actually, it's uh, Kamala because that, well, it's actually Kamala because they say Kamala. Uh, and we say comma in America. So uh, there you go. There's a the difference. So it's Kamala Harris, and uh, we'll see where she is in the polls uh, versus uh, Orange Head. Uh, after that, we'll have Econobabble. Wednesday's going to chat about the international students. There's, I think there's just been a bill passed to mandate the federal government. Um, uh, it's going to how that's going to affect the Australian economy. Uh, I think it's a cap on uh, international students coming in uh, for a while. I, I don't know if it's a temporary or what situation, but Wentzy will let us know what's going on there. I'm going to chat about the one policy that Spud Dutton has, and surprise, or as Goma Pyle used to say, surprise, surprise, surprise. Uh, surprise, 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 and, surprise. And um, Nature Calls, uh, uh tonight i am going to do a little bit on emotional support alligators yes you heard it right you've got emotional support uh blue tongue lizards and dogs and cats and etc cetera, etc cetera. well this is a support alligator it's it's a great story uh but i won't say any more than that uh wentzy's got some great news about some near extinct extinct 
species of tortoise on the uh, Galap uh, Galapagos Islands, uh, which is really good news because we know they live for hundreds of years and we want them to keep doing so. Uh, and then after that, we got Joke of the Week to round up uh, tonight. And my jokes will be um, uh, Olympic-themed. I'm not sure about Wednesdays, but hopefully they're funny because some of the ones from the last show we had were absolutely terrible, which is completely opposite to this man. He is far from terrible. He is absolutely brilliant. And that is Owen oh, Sai. <laughs> At the sound of all the uh, the spectators at the Paralympics. So it doesn't go to me, it goes to all the uh, excellent, excellent uh, athletes that will be starting the Paralympics tomorrow. I believe opening ceremonies, 4 a.m. our time. So what's that? Thursday yeah, morning. yeah. It's about 6 p.m., 8 p.m. Uh, their time, I believe. Their time, correct. correct. Um, but yeah. before we do continue, I do want to acknowledge the uh, traditional custodians of the land on which we gather today, the Turbrul and Yagra people, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture and honour their rich traditions and enduring con contributions to this region. And I extend this respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today, listening or watching us. Ah, beautifully said, beautifully wrapped up. Uh, yeah. Very, very well done. Something else that I think is being uh, very well done, um, by wearing purple on Wear It Purple Day, which is on the 30th. So I believe that's this Friday, uh, Wednesday. Correct, correct. I know we've got a. I know we've got a session on it. I think we've got a. Uh, we've got a pride session. We actually had a pride session tonight as well, but obviously mm -hmm. doing the blurt sort of made things a little bit hard. Um, uh, okay. It was Is that um, just an online event. From your uh, no, no, it wasn't actually. It we had. It was there was a quite a big sponsor from my my work, mm -hmm. um, Treasury Wine Estates, because um, they're very much a, a diversity. Um, our first company, which is great. That's and awesome. um, it is, it's really good. And, um, but unfortunately where they were having the, uh, the pride uh, session, as it were, um, it was all the way down the other end of Melbourne. And, yeah. uh, and I knew that I had to get back here for the, the blurt, et cetera, et cetera. So it was just going to be too hard, unfortunately, mm. but I did do a very good, um, Pride uh, session last week. Um, that was uh, LGBTQI uh, transgender sort of learnings, etc. So, mm. um, and we will, as I say, we will have this Pride thing on Friday. Uh, the wear with purple. Now, whether that's a, <clears throat> a virtual as well as online. Uh, sorry, virtual as well as um, in uh, face. Yeah, in face to face. IRL, um, as the young kids say. What <laughs> in real life? IRL. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Or oh, CBF, as we used to say. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but anyway. I'll uh, still use that. Yes. Yeah, That's most Mondays for me. Yes. And Tuesdays. And well, Fridays. Most, 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 days end in, most uh, days that end in day. Um, <laughs> but my my wearing purple, I'm wearing purple day, Australians demonstrate rainbow young people that they are celebrated and respected, acknowledging or have the right to be proud of who they are and who they are becoming. Now, Wincy, rainbow young people, can you mm. explain Can you explain what that means, rainbow young people? Okay, so I uh, don't know specifically about rainbow young people, but I don't know if, if this is what you're referring to, um, but Wear It Purple Day was founded in New Jersey in 2010 after um, the suicide of a young teen. And so people wear, wear, uh, wear purple to signify unity and support um, for the LGBTQI plus uh, youth community. Um, initially, it started off as a sorrowful event, um, but now it's, it's moved towards harm prevention and celebrating this, the diversity of our young people. Um, and obviously, we've mentioned this a few times on the show. I do have my oldest, Elijah, is um, trans and definitely um, 
uh, no different to the person they were before they came out. So, um, no, I think a lot of, an amazing person. Absolutely, they are. They are. Um, yeah, very well spoken. As you know, when you came over here a few weeks ago, and has definitely has a lot of uh, what. Well, a lot of thoughts on 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 the world and and has lots of views of of everything uh they're not afraid of talking adult conversations um no. especially they, especially like in the community in their community too like yeah, yeah really exactly. understanding what's going on and and proud mm. of that community etc so um and as you just uh sort of alluded to the originally founded by students in response to the global stories of teenagers that were taking their own lives due to bullying and harassment yeah. It's become an international movement of love and support, which is really cool. I think you've got some uh, numbers you may be able to pop up there, Wensai. Uh, um, we have the generic ones, yeah, which will help regardless. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll see if there's any, if I've got any other, don't have any other. But what I will do is um, you can... If you just if you just type in "We're at Purple Day 2024" anywhere, if you want a bit of information about it, you can easily get that. There's quite obviously quite a lot on the web at the moment, but mm. this year's theme is uh, "Your Passion, Your Pride," and the winner of "We're at Purple's Youth Action Council Design Commission to create a campaign message and art work in celebration of LGBTQIA plus people openly and visibly achieving their dreams in sport, art, science, and more. So that's pretty cool. I thought yeah, we should definitely nice. mention that on the show. So, yeah. Oh, wear but, something purple this Friday, everyone. Yes, absolutely. I'll definitely be doing that without a shadow of a doubt. So, we're talking purple, we're talking colors, we're talking orange uh, of the headed one. Yes. Yeah, so, orange head or Carmela, what do Aussies think? Yeah. Do they care? Do they even care? Do they really care? That is a very good question. Um, a recent poll um, by Talbot Mills Research here in Australia. Um, just I know you're going to be talking about poll, poll the, what polls yep. are saying in yep. the US. Yeah. Um, but this one was recently published just for what Australians would vote for if we we're going through the same process. Um, but surprise, surprise. Um, the majority of Australians would vote uh, Kamala Harris and not yeah. Trump. They how big? How big is that? Yeah. How big? How big is that? I'd okay. Like, I really want the majority to be super you, you want to see it? Okay. All yeah, right. I don't want a I fifty-seven have... percent. I'll be very upset if I see that. Okay. Well, I've got some show and tell so that you can see um, cool. what what Excellent. it's all about. So, all right. What have we got? The general. Uh, numbers. It went from thirty percent when Biden was running. Oh yes, percent. With so I'm looking at the graph on the left, with sixteen yeah. percent um, saying they uh, wouldn't uh, would vote for someone else. Twenty percent right. said they would would not vote. Six were unsure, and twenty eight percent voted for Trump. That was only a month ago. Right. Okay. Now Harris has come into the picture. That thirty yeah. percent for Biden has increased to forty-eight percent. Yeah, that's good to um, see. Yep, yeah. and the other went from sixteen to three. Those yeah. who wouldn't vote was reasonably yeah. the same, twenty to fourteen yeah. percent. Yeah, unsure remained about the same, six to seven percent. But yeah. Trump also stayed at twenty-seven percent. So the interesting of, one there as mm, well is the wouldn't votes. So the wouldn't wouldn't yeah. vote have gone down by six as well. Yeah, so a little, so, a, a little bit significant there. Uh, yeah. The other um, piece of information um, I've got here is who would vote by by the party by Australian party. So, not surprisingly, Labor and Green supporters would overwhelmingly support Harris, fifty nine percent with Labor voters and fifty eight percent Green. So I'm not surprised there. Coalition, yeah. a little bit surprised, forty three percent would vote for uh, Harris. Uh, but not surprising, 58% of One Nation on the graph on the right <laughs> would vote for Trump. Oh, of course they would. So, uh, so I, I'm, not, I'm surprised right. it's not higher. I'm very yeah, surprised exactly. it's not higher. So, yeah. yeah. Um, however, thank, 37%. Thank heaven for small mercies. Uh, exactly. Thank goodness they're only a small, uh, small margin of, yeah. of, of a small percentage of voters in the country. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but interestingly, LMP. 37% would vote for Trump. So it's still significant. 
Yeah, I'm not surprised by I'm that. Not surprised. They're, yeah, they're idiots. They, I mean, but overwhelmingly, basically. Harris is in the lead. Yeah. yeah. And my last slide. Um, all of this is will be in the show notes. Yeah. It's straight out of the uh, the news article from the Absolutely. ABC. Absolutely, all our links will be in the show notes. Yep. But the last one here is by gender. So men, forty four percent would vote. Harris and 52% women would vote um, Kamala, whereas yeah. 35% men would go for would vote for Trumpy, yeah. and 19% women um, Trump. would vote Trump. So, do, that, yeah. that, do you know what? That out of everything you've shown me, that is actually the most fascinating. Mm. One out of five women, one out of five women would vote for Trump. Yeah, no, no, you're I, that, that's my point. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> that that is the most fascinating statistic that you just showed me. I find that incredible. I can't believe yeah. that. Yeah. I'm like, do but, you want to be one of the women women he rapes as well? I'm like, mm, Jesus Christ. What, what are you yeah. seriously? What are you doing? Do, yeah, do, exactly. do, you, do you know what you're doing? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That yeah. That's yeah, that completely throws me that one. So I thought that was uh, an interesting story. So Hopefully that gets translated to the Americans later this year, but you'll fill us in more in the next segment um, with what the I will. I'll, I'll let Probably you know. We'll get to... Absolutely. I will. I, I will let you know where that's all going, but we'll have to crack on. Um, mm. I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to go through this a bit quick because we've got just so much to get through. <laughs> As um, always. <laughs> too much, too, too much to be honest. But anyway, um, scientists may have found a radical solution for making the hamburger um, less bad for the planet. So um, sushi, a four-week-old Holstein calf, was lying in a pen under the hum of a metal fan when a whole bunch of professors and graduates arrived to sample his stomach. Um, the male calf greeted the researchers with a friendly nibble and then he uh, went down and um, uh, started uh, just uh, grazing on his rice hulls, as it were. But even as he was doing that, the fungi bacteria and other tiny creatures were breaking down feed into energy and chemicals and setting in motion an ancient process that today heats the earth more than every flight across the world uh, combined. So... Now, you want to see this because this is why I love cows and this is why I stopped eating meat. So if you don't think that's one of the cutest things you've ever seen, I'm sorry. But yes, seriously. it's very cute. It is very cute. Um, Funny how it's called sushi, though. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's obviously the irony there, obviously. <laughs> but the 125-pound calf is prox approximately... A $30 million experiment by scientists. Yes, that's $30 million experiment. Uh, University of California um, Institute to change the inner workings of a cow's stomach. Mm, okay. So it's one of the most. Yes, well, yeah, well, yeah, it, it should, yeah, <laughs> you're right. It, 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 yeah, you should, it should say stomachs, but there you go. This is Washington Post. What do they know? The most consumed <laughs> creatures on the planet. Um, which I think when you look how beautiful the animal is, it's just horrible. Anyway, produce enormous amounts of methane. Now, everyone thinks it's farting. It's not. It's burping. That is responsible for 30% of the global house warming. Completely out of the box, Ermias Kirub, a professor of animal science. Nobody has done it before. There's approximately 1.5 billion cattle on the planet. Their digestive systems are nothing short of miraculous. Uh, as we know, they survive on grass, corn, alfalfa, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The rumen has a dark side. The porous, fleshy chamber hosts single-celled organisms called archaea, which break down the hydrogen and carbon dioxide that pr produces the methane. Unable to process the gas, the cows burp it up. Mm. The average cow produces around 220 pounds of methane per year. If you want to do a quick um, metric on that, would be nice. Mm -hmm or ha around half the emissions of an average car. Cows are currently responsible for around 4% of global 100 kilos. warming. 100 kilos. That is a shite load. It's a lot methane. of gas. It is. Of, uh, that's nearly as much as Dutton 
gives out every time he <laughs> talks about another policy. But anyway, that is another we'll story. Get to um, later on. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Partial solutions are bound. Companies such as Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat have developed plant-based beef products that look and smell and taste like real meat. Environmentalists have urged consumers to cut back on beef uh, for lower emissions, chicken and fish. Now, um, unfortunately, I've been doing a lot of reading lately and it has to do with the deep sea. And I've been reading a lot about fish. And so I'm finding it even hard to eat fish nowadays. Mm. <laughs> but the because I've just been reading how smart they are. It's just, just phenomenal. But anyway, I'll talk about that another day on the show. But as countries grow richer, uh, beef production continues to rise in the past 15 years uh, by 13% globally. So adding seaweed, oregano or garlic to a cow's diet can cut the methane emissions sometimes by up to 80%. Mm, wow, nice. That is that is a huge saving. But only one in 10 cattle in the US um, are fed every day by humans. The ratio is similar globally. The rest is uh, range-free on pastures. So therefore you can't mm. control what they're eating and right. whatever they're eating is rubbish to a certain extent. And they keep burping it up and it keeps going in the environment and the cycle continues. Mm. But uh, getting more than 1 billion free-ranging cattle to eat seaweed or garlic is logistically almost impossible. Mm. Yeah. I'm not going to go any further on this article. It is a really, really big article. It's a fantastic article. It's well worth reading. Uh, I will put the link in the show notes, definitely. Yes, please. Um, I'd like to read that one. Yeah, it's a cracker. It really is a good one. So uh, I will do that as we speak. But, um, yeah, but do think about it next time you have a hamburger. Um, mm. Check for two seconds, maybe go, oh, could I have plant-based? Yeah. Um, I've had plant-based quite a few times. It tastes pretty good. Yeah, so, yeah. Mainly my my beef, pardon the pun, <laughs> intended actually, mainly mm. beef with plant-based um, products is that they tend to put a lot of, uh, salt or sodium, cal uh, cal calcium, whatever, salt products to make it tasty, um, which surely uh, is just as bad as for your health as eating meat for the planet. So, oh well, it, it might not be great for your health, but you having a bit more salt and dying earlier is not bad for the planet. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> swings and roundabouts, my friend. Swings and roundabouts. <laughs> I don't think my kids would be happy with that, with that uh, logic, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, talking about your kids and logic, what's happening with the Brizzy Pedestrian Bridge? What, 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 uh, what, what? Yes. Do tell. A, a new bridge is opening up tomorrow, Thursday, here in, in the city of Brisbane, Bris Vegas. Um, yeah, because you, you don't have enough bridges. No, no, I don't have enough. Um, it is the River City. <laughs> Very similar to Paris and its River Seine. So we're, we're up there. We're up there with uh, the class. Um, <laughs> but tomorrow, um, speaking of Bris Vegas, uh, there is a new precinct called Queen's Wharf, which is a new development with a casino similar to your Melbourne Crown Casino on South Bank. Oh, uh, we've got one God. about to open right. up in a couple yeah. of months' time. But as part of that, build uh the developers uh have built a bridge crossing the uh brisbane river from that precinct all the way across to south bank uh which i'm sure many visitors to brisbane are familiar with which is where you find your man-made beach uh it's a 300 meter long uh bridge has uh lots of uh shelter or, or shade because in summer gets quite hot and muggy so you need a bit of protection it's going to be a pedestrian only no no cars no bikes no e-scooters of any sort uh they're predicting 10 oh, wow. so no e-scooters because that's no. that's huge in brisbane you've got e-scooters absolutely everywhere yeah yeah no oh you don't even hear them do you <laughs> No, well, no, you just get knocked over by them and... yeah until you get hit exactly uh yeah, but the interesting it. part so on go on no, 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 go for it. Okay. The interesting part about the bridge is the name of the bridge, Neville Bonner. It's been named after the first Indigenous federal senator to parliament. Um, yeah, so it's, it's been named in his honour, who was a Queenslander. 
I was going to say, I assume he's a Queenslander. Yes. Um, yeah, so... I thought I did have the notes for this. But anyway, um, yeah, so he became a senator in the uh, 70s, I think it was. He was born in 1922. Um, but yes, yeah, so I will have to talk about him on Indelible Indigenous at one point in the near future because uh, I don't want to take up too much time on this one. Uh, but yes, so that was the main reason for me bringing up this story was because of Neville Bonner. Um, I had no idea it had been named after him, but yes, it's open tomorrow. I am actually in the city tomorrow working, so maybe I will pay it a visit. What you know what you could do, if you're actually on the bridge, what you could do is do a selfie on the bridge and um, be at the area where it says uh, Neville Bonner Bridge and then post it in um, a few of the, the new blur uh, sites and say hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be awesome. Great idea. Great idea. Good. That'd be good. But yes. I will talk about Neville Bonner in a future Indelible Indigenous episode. Look forward segment. to it. That will be excellent again. Very, very good. Um, yeah, so cracking on. Also, we, well, we're talking about Paris tonight. Well, we're back in Paris again. Um, Pavel Durov, the billionaire founder of Telegram. If you don't know what Telegram is, it's basically like WhatsApp for the mafia. Um, <laughs> and, it didn't um, start off like that, though. No, it didn't start off like that, but it's absolutely like that now. And it's just a cesspit of um, people that don't want to be uh, found. Um, basically, th that's it. It's a cesspit for people that don't want to be found. Um, and there's lots of right-wing nutbags. And before um, True Social um, happened, the most ironically named um, uh, social media uh, app in the world. Anyway, mm. um, before that was launched, uh, there was heaps and heaps of MAGA um, and there probably still is uh, heaps of MAGA groups on Telegram, but I think quite a few of them all went to um, uh, all went to Truth Social. Um, the yeah, so Pavel Durov, he's very young. He's like I, I don't think he's even thirty, mm. um, and he's the CEO. Uh, anyway, he's been arrested uh, after arriving on a private jet from yeah. Azerbaijan. Yeah, Ladi Farat, uh, you're exactly right. Um, it took place on August the 24th, and he holds a dual citizenship in France and Dubai because that's where the company um, that actually runs uh, Telegram is domiciled, I believe, in Dubai. Mm, correct. Why wouldn't it be? He gets a really cheap uh, tax breaks and, mm -hmm. you know, all the dodgy stuff happens over there, so... Anyway, um, the accusations and legal uh, context on this is it's linked to preliminary, preliminary investigation into his alleged failure to moderate illegal activities, exactly mm. what I was just talking about. Yeah. Um, there's so many illegal uh, activities on and, uh, yeah, bordering on illegal. Um, so the investigation is led by France's National Anti-Fraud and Cybersecurity Police Units, Um Reactions from Russia. Russia has demanded that France respect Durov's rights, yeah, because he's actually meant to be a Russian citizen. Yeah. So a Russian citizen that moved to Dubai because he couldn't do what he wanted to do with Telegram, even in Russia, believe it or mm. not. Yeah. So with officials calling him a political prisoner, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. The situation has sparked criticism from figures like Alien Head. Who would have thought? Of course. Who, who suggested that freedom of expression in Europe is under threat? Yeah. Hmm. Freedom from, yeah, anyway. Um, Telegram with nearly, I find this I find this very hard to believe, but apparently this is true. Mm. Telegram with nearly a billion users. Really? Who would have thought? I, I, I mean, Twitter doesn't have anywhere near that, do they? I reckon they'd have more than a billion. Could you do a quick check on what yep. um, Meta has and what Twitter has, which is why I read this last little bit out, please? Yeah. I'm interested in that. And True Social too. Um, founded in 2013 after Jurov left Russia, the platform has been a key tool for unfiltered rubbish 
and dissemination, uh, misinformation and conspiracy theories and complete crap, particularly during the Russian-Ukraine conflict. Um, and it raises questions about the balance between regulation and privacy, freedom of speech. Well, I, I've always thought this and I still do. Yeah, you're free, free to say whatever it is you want to say, but you're not free from the consequences of you saying it. Exactly. So it's, it's as easy as that. Um, yeah, go for it, your life if that's what you want to do. But, yeah, you're not uh, free for what happens to you afterwards. So do you know what? Uh, you forgot, and it's not your fault because I always forget, um, and you're always the one who has to tell me. But we have just gone through all of uh, Blurred Around the World and you Without. did not hear. You did not hear. Correct. I did. I realised halfway through, and then it was like, uh, whatever. We've done it again. <laughs> oh, um, what can you do we now? Well, we absolutely. Um, but yes, to answer your question, WhatsApp has r roughly two billion users worldwide. Uh, Twitter, approximately five hundred million active monthly users what was the other platform we're after uh truth social so what was twitter One. and what was whatsapp uh twitter was 500 million whatsapp 2 billion did you say twitter was 500 million yeah it doesn't seem As like much i would have thought more half a billion only half a billion correct and there's eight billion people on earth Mm. Well, I tell you, tell you what, I'd be really interested. WeChat. How, how much on WeChat? Nearly a billion, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. I reckon it's more than a billion on WeChat. Um, Truth Social. It's hard to see, but because uh, uh, saw... they, they, he won't they want it coming it. out. He, he won't <laughs> want to share how bad the yeah, amount exactly. of people that aren't on it. I quickly saw something that might be only two million. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, that's probably true. Yeah, maybe 1.3 million billion, sorry, for WeChat. I'm not sure. Yeah, that, um, that, that seems to ring true to me. I find it amazing. I cannot believe that Telegram's got nearly a billion users. That's unbelievable. Mm. That's just phenomenal. So, yeah. Anyway, all right, fantastic work for that, Wenchy. But now we've got time for this. <laughs> Welcome to our newest segment, Pole Position. Absolutely, is Pole Position. And I thought I'd do a couple, just a couple little things different this week. Um, obviously, I will uh, talk about where the poles are. I also, also I might uh, let you know, with those poles, who is donating and fundraising for the campaigns um, oh, okay. to, well, basically the backing what those poles are. Uh, I um okay so what we've got uh, this is I just want to see make sure this is up to date what what date do we have on this I'm just trying to get a date it's not easy to get a date um it should be today because I pulled it up today uh just making sure okay 19 hours ago so that's pretty good that's pretty good. Um, okay, so the question has been, I'm not sure if you run with the uh, – sorry, what was that, mate? I just said, yep, that's pretty recent. Quincy, what was that? I said it was pretty recent. Yeah, no, absolutely. The, so the question has been, uh, how has – question is, how has the polls been um, affected by RFK Jr. dropping out of the race? And we'll have a look at that. Uh, but it, it looks like, from all the analysis that I've been listening to, it looks like it may make a difference of anywhere between um, half a point to a full point. But to be honest with you, no one really knows. But they were saying they thought that Robert uh, Kennedy Jr. was taking uh, votes away from Trump. And um, as the sort of um, classy gentleman he is, he's just asked... Uh, just before he dropped or just after he dropped out of the race, he just asked both camps, the uh, Harris camp and the Orange Head camp, for a job in the administration. He Which went to can, the Harris camp first. Oh, 
Well, the Harris camp obviously went, you've Why got you to be a joking. Dick and um, an o- a dick orange head went, yeah, we'll put you in charge of the environment or even better, put him in charge of um, science slash medicine. That'd be, that'd be brilliant. That'd be good. Considering he's Crazy. an anti-vaxxer. So that'd be awesome. Jeez. Yeah. And, and we're not just talking COVID anti-vax. We're talking about polio. Any, we're talking about yeah. rubella, measles. All the hey. stuff that saves people's lives. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty terrible. But anyway, um, who is ahead? Well, the polls that I have, this is coming from The Independent, um, from the co, um, uh, co.uk, but they're getting their stuff from 538, which is a national polling uh, averages um, and has been doing uh, this sort of stuff for a very long time. Uh, they are saying that Harris has a 3.5-point uh, lead over Trump in the latest average of national polls, um, delayed by 538. And uh, marginally ahead of Trump in the national polls, uh, though the rate remain, race remains tight in variation in swing states. Uh, as of a few days ago, the swing states, most of them, not all of them, nearly all of them, um, seem to be uh, swinging back to um, uh Carmela, uh, Carmela Harris um, uh, at the moment, which is uh, particularly good. Um, and I'm just trying to have a look if I've got anything else on the polling. Uh, just see if there's anything else there. Doesn't look like... Oh, we've got a couple of things here. What have we got? So, yeah, okay. So as you know or may not know, uh, the DNC, the uh, Democratic Democratic national um uh oh gee whiz i've just gone just totally gone blank uh mm-hmm. conference sorry my bad um, anyway uh, everything's a conference in america it's like <laughs> nfl has a conference and the afc and the nfc and just everything's a conference uh, just so much PLC, um, plc yeah <laughs> yeah it's yeah the rnc the you know i I can't see. Uh, now, the um, Democratic National Convention conference comes to a close. The latest polls suggest there was a little shake-up as Harris leads remains strong. So this includes third parties, and I will bring this up. This is what we're seeing at the moment. So on august the 15th including third parties so that was before the national conference i believe if i'm correct was uh 43 percent to 49 percent on august 22 uh 43.6 is trump 49.5 which is about three uh percent there um that is with rfk jr in the race now, the interesting thing about this is when it's a straight race between Harris and um, and Orange Head, uh, August 15th, 47 to 53, and August 22 is 48 52, which is a straight 4% increase. So for RFK dropping out, it looks to me that Democrats are actually doing better, not worse. Mm. But it did go so, down in that seven day period. From fifty-three to fifty-two percent in the straight race. Uh, that is true, but one percent is only, it's only not 1%. huge. But that's it's true. There was, margin, there was there was sure. well, yeah. But you are right there. It went from six percent to four percent. So why that happened, I'm not sure. This poll still shows Harris far ahead with a six point lead over Trump at forty nine point five percent of the vote. Um Yes, yeah, sorry, I don't know what I was talking about before. I said 3%. Um, it's obviously 6%. Uh, including the third parties, it's um, 6% in that poll. So, yeah, so that's where we are on poll position uh, this week. As I said, we'll have a look at that every uh, couple of weeks, see see where we are. Um, but it's, it's looking good. I mean, as I said before, she's only been in the race for, what, four or five weeks or something? Um, yeah, a month. It's just it's it's just like a, a different world. It's just absolutely incredible. Mm. Um, so let's hope it stays like that till November. Oh, it's only what is it? Eighty days or less? Yeah, it's it's less than eighty days. Absolutely less mm. than eighty days. So yeah, no, uh, we absolutely do hope that. And um, 
Yeah, no, some good stuff happening there. And also, good stuff happening here. Did you know a single blood donation could save up to three lives? Be the lifeblood of Australia. Join us and search Give Blood to book your donation with Australian Red Cross Lifeblood today. Give life. Give blood. The Australia Institute produces high-quality research that has real-world impact, whether it's revealing the $10.3 billion in fossil fuel subsidies provided by federal and state governments last year, or our long-standing research advocating for a federal anti-corruption commission with real teeth, we change minds. To donate, head on over to australiainstitute.org.au. Maynard Keynes it's wrote the, the book of modern still. macro, no the man you ever. need when the economy's uh, the off track. Economy, Depression, stupid. recession, now your question's in session. No, Have a seat no, and I'll tell you economy, one stupid. simple yeah, lesson. Boom, 1929, the big crash. We did it's it the economy, economy talk stupid. Talk about a decision that the federal government here, Australia, uh, the AOP, has decided to make changes to the number of international students coming into the country as of next year. Um, they're reducing the the number um, and setting it to 270,000 next year, which is doesn't seem like much. Um, what was it before? It, uh, it had peaked. Um, did I have? No, I didn't. I thought I had um, set up a, what do you call it, um, show and tell, but I didn't. Um, I think it was a little bit more than that, uh, 800 or something, uh, 300. Oh, okay. I say 800 is um, a lot more than that. Yeah, uh, 260,000. So uh, between 22 and and 23, that the years oh. 2022 and 2023. Um, so are they saying they're going to cap it at 270,000 now? Is that correct, correct. So, so that's only a 10,000 on top of what you just said, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it doesn't seem like much, and uh, there's a lot of hoo-ha going on about it. Um, but what the, the main difference, the main change is that uh, they're going to redistribute where those students get accepted. So a lot of the bigger institutions, um, your University of Melbourne, University of Queensland, your um, probably Monash, um, all the big, big universities around the country um, will lose out and the smaller regional universities will, will gain some of those students. Um, some of the main reasons why the government is doing this is to um, supposedly to bring down the, the rent uh, or housing um, crisis to, to alleviate that, which I actually call um, bullshit on because international students only account for 4% of the housing market of renters. And so, um, uh, yeah, so to me, it doesn't make sense that by reducing or capping the uh, numbers coming in will um, make any dent in the rent uh, crisis that we've got here in Australia and even uh, housing affordability won't make a difference either. Um, University students, international university students or international students generally bring in about $30 billion annually to our economy. And Chalmers, our treasurer, um, said that or described that as being the biggest export where we don't dig out of the ground. So so it's pretty pretty big market. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the problem, though, hey? They put all their eggs in this basket a long time mm. ago. And yeah. not, not this government, the other government in particular. They ran mm. the universities like businesses. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and this has been the problem. They, their mm. whole idea to make revenue, to make revenue out of a yeah. place that's meant to just give you a freaking education yeah, and exactly. set you up for the rest of the world. Um you know, and, and so therefore you make a revenue out of people coming over and studying at your um, university. What, a, what an absolutely mm. st 
stupid program and a stupid process. And it is. And, and 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 the other thing is, you leave yourself open and you're exposed so much because, as you just said, thirty billion, thirty billion. Mm. Um, that is, you're you're talking. I think you're talking in uh, tax cuts language there. Yeah, Can, yeah, uh, pretty much. Especially with um, the and not only just um, university fees. Uh, actually, what I don't know is whether that's just university fees, the thirty billion. I'd like to. Um, it would like to work out international students what else they bring to into the country. Like they spend on going vacations, um, supermarkets, restaurants, and all their daily goings and 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 whatnot. So that they've got to bring in more than thirty billion. If if thirty billion is just on education. The other thing is, though, if you're an international student and you're paying a fortune to go somewhere, that means you've got a fortune to pay to go somewhere. Mm. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, you're not getting people that, you know, uh, really could do with a, a good education. I mean, you, you are, but I, they can't afford it. And so um, mm. the only people that are getting it are people that um, usually can afford it from their, from their home country. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. um, that that always doesn't. Yeah, it never. Sit. Yeah, this international student thing has never sat with me particularly well. Um, mm. It's interesting know. that Australia pioneered the international students back in the eighties. Yeah, so they were one of the first few countries to to introduce it and and make it a business rather than an educational um, uh, venture. And one but of the other. It wasn't, it wasn't mm. so high in the revenue back then, though, was it? I mean, it wasn't no, as no. huge. Um, no. They didn't charge as much, et cetera. So it wasn't as paramount um, if you lose that business, et cetera. So, mm. Yeah, exactly. But, well, I, re I remember when I went to uni in, what was it, 1990? I think the university fees for a science degree was only $5,000 a year or something, not even. Yeah. Um, and I think medical degrees were like 10,000 10, or more. And yeah. obviously, as the Australian government um, put, allowed more international students to come in, universities started raising all their fees and things like that, and just became more expensive for everyone. Um, what, one of the other impacts with the large institutions here at least is if they have a fall in revenue, it will impact research because they'll have less money to do um, research, which means professors will have to do more work to get more funding for to, to research, uh, to fund those research projects. Um, but having said that, some of the smaller universities may get pick up some of those losses from the bigger ones. So I guess we'll, we'll see how, where, where it all lands next year. Um, but there's also other areas that um, that are affected, and this is where it affects the economy. Other sectors like um, travel industry, um, don't really care much about the real estate industry, but there'll be less people needed to, to um, house uh, international students. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think what was the other stuff that I read about. Um, yeah, so the, the, it's not just in universities where they'll lose uh, jobs. No, well, that makes that makes 100% uh, sense. Um, the thing is, though, I, I don't know how, how it works, but when they finish their degrees, et cetera, do they have any possibility to go on and, and get a, a permanent visa sort of straight away or how did, I mean, do we know how that works or? In, in some cases, yes. Um, some of them will get given a three or five year visa to stay and continue working at the university. Um, right. I met, uh, Kim and I met a young Chinese lady who did a degree at University of Queensland a few weeks ago where we met her. Yeah, and she was telling us that um, she did her master's and then her PhD, and then she started working for um, one of the departments within the university, not in research, but more in um, project management and other 
um, areas of what she was studying. And so she um, has a visa of five years, I think, if memory serves. So there is opportunities and she's loving the lifestyle here. The university is great and the, um, the people have been great that she's worked with and things like that. So there are opportunities to stay on. Um, a, lot of, a lot of international students will go back to their home country. Um, I know Vietnam, for example, they will often uh, sponsor university students, PhD masters, to come to a country like Australia. But in their contract of that um, sponsorship, they have to return back to their home country, Vietnam, at the end right. of it. So they don't they don't have right. that option. Um, right. Yeah, so it's good for us to have international students, but at the same time, like you were saying, um, it does uh, it makes the local students um, it makes it harder for them to compete because. Um, because they want they want the revenue they want them to have yeah. the spot because it's yeah, exactly. good point for them and you know yeah. uh, i know and that's 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 why i say i, I yeah, yeah. I, it doesn't sit particularly well with me and i can understand yeah. why a lot of students that would not be sort of happy about it um mm. local students that are you know trying to get into to uni yeah, etc exactly. but um but anyway yeah. uh Interesting stuff, Wenty. Very interesting stuff. Mm. I've got some interesting stuff here too from Spud Dutton. Apparently, he's come up with a policy. Yes, he has come up with a policy. And, Does he know uh, how to spell it? I'm not sure, but uh, <laughs> he definitely uh, knows how to make it terrible. Um, their plans that have fund tax cuts. So we all know that tax cuts is the best way of doing everything. Let's just give money back to people because we know mm. they're going to spend it the absolute best for everyone mm. um especially the most wealthy in this country so um just uh apropos i thought i'd just uh crowbar this in i heard a fantastic little statistic the other day this will blow your mind um the capital gains revenue from the richest 200 people in this country is equivalent to um, all of the salaries that are earned by all of the working people. I'll let, I'll let you sit with that. It's crazy, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Um, I think we've discussed this before on the show, but there's definitely um, other things that the governments of Australia could be doing to reduce... Um, a lot of this uh, pain that we're all suffering with, housing, cost of living, things like that. And that's one but of them, a couple of gains. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. And the other thing is a ALP know that uh, last time they went to the uh, electorate with really, really good policies um, and well thought out in 2019, they got pipped at the post by someone that um, had no policies. Mm. Yep. Yeah, because they were uh, um, trying to introduce caps on uh, what it's called. Um, oh, they had. Uh, yeah, correct, Some... uh, correct. And they had uh, they had capital gains changes in there as well. As well, yeah. And they also had um, dividend franking uh, credit uh, changes mm. that all mm. made sense. And people that had a clue. Um, this was interesting. I was listening about this uh, the other day. They were saying that where this polled really well and where the people were the ones that would be paying this were in the teal seats. Of course. But in those seats, those when they did the polls, this that particular plan that Labor did polled really well in those oh, seats. Yeah. The place that it didn't poll well was in um, Tasmania, the only yeah. blue state in Australia, and at the time, the it still is everything oh, yeah, else true. is red, I believe. I well, think, I think. Northern Territory's moved to CLP now, so they're technically blue. What's CLP? Uh, Country Liberal Party, Northern Territory. They won uh, okay. in a landslide last weekend. Just gone 15, 16 seats to four for Labor. Oh, you so, kidding? Yeah. 
Yeah, massive loss. Wow. So I wonder what that means. Uh, um, probably means that um, people were unhappy with the voice outcome. Uh, must have been quite divisive in, in Northern Territory. And, of course, Northern Territory is predominantly white um, right. population voting people. In my Although opinion. they've got the biggest population of Indigenous in the country. Exactly. But, yeah, so outnumbered by, by the white, yeah, yeah, by Western uh, voters. Yeah, they're shockers. Shockers. Yeah. Anyway, on this show, one time we'll do a little bit of a deep dive into what happened there, but not at the moment. But anyway, apropos, um, I thought I'd just mention that statistic because I thought it was a pretty interesting one. Mm. It's going down a bit of a rabbit hole and I haven't even talked about his policy yet. So I need to get through this. Uh, then yes. we can talk about uh, nature calls. Anyway, so these funding cuts would involve scrapping production, tax credits, interest payments uh, on off-budget funds and FPT exemptions on electric cars. Oh, just electric cars. Um, well, they're, they're, that's what some of the cuts would involve, not right, just. Okay. Um, and the deficit concerns, a budget projected to remain in deficit for the next decade, coalition acknowledges the challenge of restoring $30 billion taken from higher income due to... So what they're looking at doing, if they get in, is they want to try to restore the $30 billion of the tax cuts to give it back to the higher uh, income earners again. Yeah, of course. The stage four tax cuts that got modified. <laughs> They're just, they honestly, want to that. I have no words. I have no words. Anyway. Yeah, FF, the is all I can say. Oh, seriously. Considering lifting the 135 threshold, which you, you and I are in, the 37% tax rate applies this proposal would serve as a partial tax cut, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, great. We don't need a tax cut. We need to spend more on no. services. It's really exactly. fucking obvious. Jesus Christ. What they're doing to NDIS, they're already cutting on cutting funding on that. Um, yeah, so because we don't pay enough taxes in this country. We're giving um, rebates too much. Anyway, uh, go on. No, absolutely. No, you're 100% right. You're 100%. And just apropos, fantastic show at the moment called Safe Home. And it's all about family violence and the whole um, sort of uh, court system and the victim system and the perpetrator system and how it's just a freaking debacle in this country and probably around the world. But I can only speak for this country at the moment. Um, it's called Safe Home. It's on SBS. Absolutely well worth looking at. It's, uh, okay. it's a series and... Um, it's not a documentary. It is an actual uh, drama, but uh, yeah, it tells you it's very fly on the wall sort of stuff to give you an idea of how bad it is when those sort of services are getting their funding cut by it. this sort of shit. Mm. Um, just, they're the sort of things that would have be, be cut for um, for this sort of shit to happen. So it just yeah, it just blows my mind. But anyway, uh, Labor's changes to tax system basically meant that. Anyone between uh, 18000 to 45000 which is absolutely fuck all for a salary, um, yeah. is now taxed at 16% of 19%. You and I would say that's a good thing, and I, well, I would think mm. that many, many people would say that's a good thing. The 30% tax rate applies between forty five to one hundred and thirty five, dollars um, while incomes over that are subject to the reinstated 37% rate of up to 190000 um, after which 45% rate plus. And I've always said, and I always will say, I don't mind paying tax at all. In fact, Ooh. I'm very, very happy to do so. Just make sure you spend my tax um, in good ways. And to be yeah, honest with exactly. you, I know they're trying to do that. I do understand that. But I also understand there's lots of lots of things in their way. But I also understand they're quite happy to give $10 billion to fossil fuel um, uh a fossil fuel, um, oh, what's that word? Oh, come on, multinationals, yeah. uh, yes. But w what is it when they give the money to the company? I can't find the word, uh, the words for me. Subsidy, yes, fossil fuel, 10 billion in subsidy. Um, you know, and and we're screaming out for family uh, violence, um, protection to get extra funding and all this sort of stuff, and yeah. you know, we just just keep funding this rubbish. But anyway, um, the interest payments from funds like 
um, <clears throat> okay, so coalition are planning to cut the funding from se several key labour initiatives to pay for this rubbish, um, such as thirteen billion allocated to green hydrogen, which I must admit. I've done a bit of research in green hydrogen and it's probably not as good as I thought it was going to be. So that's probably a little bit up in the, up in the air on that one. Um, and critical minerals production tax credits and debt interest payments from funds like the 10 billion housing Australian future fund, the half um, and the 20 billion rewiring the nation fund, which is all about renewables into the grid. Um, and additionally saving from reduced inflation, which would, lower the rate of pension and welfare welfare payment indexation and that's all part of the plan now mm. i'm just i'm going to uh just beeline on that in two seconds but just to finish this off um the coalition's tax tax cuts are aimed at encouraging australians to be aspirational rewarding financial success without heavy tax burdens David Little Proud emphasised the importance of tax reform to prevent future bracket. It's actually bullshit. No, it's Ooh. not. No, yeah. it's it's not. What it what it is, it is selfish. That's what it is. Mm. It's like, um, yep, more than happy to give uh, more money to people who already have money, and uh, don't worry about anyone else. Just worry about yourself. Um, yeah, yeah. Just just does my head in. Anyway, just uh, just circling back slightly on. Uh, where it talks about lower the rate of pension and welfare payment indexing are also part of the plan. That's also how they're going to fund it. Now, the problem with that is that the indexing mechanism, the pensions and welfare payments are typically indexed to inflation, meaning they increase in line with the cost of living. So that um, helps to keep their living standards up mm. and the rising prices, etc. So if you bring down the indexation, they're going to get less and their standard yeah. of living is going to go down. Exactly. Um, so reduced indexing, if the inflation is lower, the rate which pensions, as I just said, will be lower. Uh, the welfare recipients may still rise, albeit more slowly, and if their payments increase at a slower rate, their ability to keep up with costs could be eroded over time. So that means their cost of living is going to go up. So that's fantastic yeah. for the people who've done so much for this world. Uh, that's what we're going to do. Um, for pensioners and welfare recipients, um, welfare recipients um, who often have fixed or limited incomes, even modest increases, as we know, in the cost of essentials like food or anything like that, is really um, is brutally felt in the household. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's just it's just horrible. It's got horrible written all over it. And sure um, in summary, the plan to reduce the inflation and thereby the lower rate of the payment. Uh, seen as a way to save money, yeah, save money, but um, kill people's uh, living standards at the same time. So anyway, that wasn't particularly uh, uplifting in any way, shape or form, but sometimes we just have to cool. go there and see what the state of the world is and see what's exactly. happening. But And we'll turn that around at, in the next segment, that's for sure. We absolutely will. We've got some fantastic stuff coming up here and I am just to, about to start with... Uh, Gator support animals. And now it's time for When Nature Calls with Wancy and the Kickster on the new... <laughs> oh, there, big fella. That's the wrong nature calling. Oh, right. Here is our new segment, Nature Calls. It's all about the wonderful world of... Wonderful world... Sorry, Wincy. So for starters, that's Wally. Um, that is Wally. The uh, uh, Yeah, he's lovely. Which one's Wally? Uh, Wally is the emotional support gator. The emotional uh, support gator. It's just beautiful. It is. Nice. It's absolutely beautiful. It is lovely. So it's a lovely little story. And um, I, I found a story a, a few weeks ago, and I thought I had to share it with the people. It's... Um, it's a good one. Uh, he's nearly a six foot long alligator. It's pretty big. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Must have worked um, quite a bit too. I would imagine so, totally. Um, but they've navigated through life's challenges. Uh, he's known for his friendly demeanor, 
Um, and he's frequently appearing on social media, and he has visits in nursing homes. They take him to nursing homes. Uh, could you just imagine yes. if, if you didn't tell someone that a crocodile was coming into your nursing home, and all of a sudden there's a crocodile in your dining room as you just walk in there? Oh, my God, seriously. Stepping at everyone's feet. <laughs> oh my god well you wouldn't even need to do that um just just walking in there would be enough to scare the bejesus out of people mm. I thought. But, um he even meets with the mayor in pennsylvania but uh unfortunately he uh, recently his life took a dramatic turn because wally yeah. went missing wally went missing um and joel henny who is wally's owner uh, visiting friends in Brunswick, Georgia, on April the 21st. Wally was stolen from his pen. Oh. In the morning hours, according to the posts on Wally Gator Facebook page, uh, the Georgia Department of Natural Resources confirmed that a permit, permitted trapper responded to a nuisance alligator call in the area, released the captured gator in a remote location. However, they could not confirm whether the alligator in the question was Wally. Um, mm. oh. So Joel Henney, heartbroken and determined, has been leading a search effort to find Wally through the chances of success are slim. The swamp is large. The presence of other alligators makes search even more challenging. But the search has garnered significant support online with nearly 400 people donating more than 10K to help cover travel, legal and oh, veterans. costs. Cool. It is. It is good that people are um, kicking in here. He wasn't just a pet. He was a legally certified emotional support animal. Mm. The right. first reptile to hold such status. So it's, you know, it really, really That's serious. Progressive. Yeah, just a beautiful. Bold beautiful. and brave. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure they're brave. cute and, and not not. Uh, threatening when they're babies, but at six foot, you'd think they'd um, have pretty strong chompers there. It just shows you, though, doesn't it? It really does show you um, mm. what you, you know, what you um, uh, represent or, or what you uh, sort of bring up or how you, um, whether it's your kids or whether it's a gator or whether it's a dog or whatever is in complete reflection of how that animal or kid or whatever is going to react in, mm. in later life and is going to act. And um, he, I think he's had him, uh, I think he, I think he had him for a while. So mm. yeah, it's a, here you go. Henny who rescued and rehabilitated animals for years. So he seems like a really good guy found a special connection with Wally who became a source of comfort. Um, including the loss of his family members. And uh, Henny had a battle with prostate uh, cancer as well. So <laughs> these are the things that um, that Wally loves. He loves his uh, chin being rubbed. Oh, cute. Just like a dog. <laughs> Just like a dog. He likes, he likes giving hugs. Okay, and, nice. And I'm not sure how you do that with those little. How do you? Yeah, probably like the photo you showed us, where it was yeah, just yeah. sitting on his chest. And, yeah, yeah. Behaviors very unheard of uh, from typical alligators. So you know, he's a really, really special gator. Um, now, in Pennsylvania, reptiles like Wally can be kept as pets, but Georgia law only allows uh, licensed or permitted individuals to keep alligators legal discrepancy adds another layer of difficulty to henny's search on top of that henny has been warned by the dnr that he could face prosecution if he catches wally oh. okay. raising concerns about the legal legal implication implicate uh, implications, implications. Of re that word of recovering his beloved alligator oh. so um yeah oh. it's, it, That's pretty it's sad yeah, it is a bit of a sad story, unfortunately, but it, it's a beautiful story, but it is a sad story. So he's touched many hearts and his disappearance has led to widespread concern. Fans have taken to social media to try to find him, et cetera, contacting the government, uh, governor's office, et cetera, et cetera. Henny, deeply appreciative of the sport, has uh, support, has offered no questions asked reward for Wally's safe return. He emphasizes joy Wally brings to others and irreplaceable role for the alligator plays in his life.
So I just thought it was a lovely story to bring. I, admittedly, it is sad, uh, but it's also beautiful to know that while he was there for a long time before unfortunate, yeah. this yeah. unfortunateness, and he was really yeah. helping out, and, and how a creature like that could even do that, you know, I think yeah. it's incredible. Yeah, provide that emotional support for someone who needs yeah. it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's very sad. Let's hope they do find him. Although I do wonder if it was a domesticated alligator, would it survive in the wild? Yeah, it's a great question. A really, really good question. Um, maybe its uh, natural instincts will kick in. I'm not sure. I don't know. But yeah. it's a great question. I don't know. Over to you, my friend. All righty. I'm going to bring you some news about an endangered a uh, giant tortoise on the Galapagos Islands, which is off the coast of South America. Nice. Uh, on the east side of the Pacific Ocean. Um, the Chelon, Chelon, Chelonoides Darwini is also known as the Santiago Island giant tortoise. Um, was near extinct um, due to... Uh, animals being introduced in the Galapagos Island um, pre and post uh, Charles Darwin arriving um, because of animals like goats, rats, humans, of course, because they, they'll just kill anything that's unique. Um, so it was, they almost drove this uh, tortoise, giant tortoise, to extinction. Over the last few years, um, they've been trying to breed them in captivity on the island. Um, and recently they repatriated around about 560 tortoises across several islands there in the Galapagos where these are found. Um, so there's always I, risks. Mm, go on. I re I, no, I read a while ago that, um, I read a while ago that um, uh, since David Attenborough had talked about the Galapagos Islands and he did a whole show on them quite a long time ago mm. and quite a few times, et cetera, et cetera. The tourist um, population in the Galapagos has gone through the freaking roof. Yes. And it's been destroying the island and the inhabitants of the island. Mm, of course. Yeah, it's amazing that, yeah, for someone who was trying to bring the beauty of that region, the archipelago of the Galapagos Islands, how it then produced a bad thing with tourism yeah it's not i don't think it was in his intent obviously um he wouldn't have wanted that no no it def definitely wouldn't have been his intent um at all but unfortunately that's the repercussions so mm. yeah i guess that's the greed of operators in in those areas or who um i can't remember who the owner of galapagos islands are um um yeah we'll have to find that out um but yes so these um homework yes homework uh these tortoises um can reach up to 1.2 meters in width for males and 82 centimeters for females uh, so that's quite big they can live um over 100 years 200 even in some cases um and yes yeah, so they i've got a bit of show and tell to show you what they look like so there is one of the tortoises it's an wow and, and how how old is that one doesn't say but it looks pretty big and wrinkly so i would say it's <laughs> many it decades like old straight out of the dinosaur era doesn't it mm, it's just yeah phenomenal. it's incredible yeah they're beautiful creatures oh um, I remember going to Singapore Zoo many years ago when the kids were really young and you were able to experience um, being with a giant tortoise. Wouldn't have been one of these ones. Um, but, yeah, they're just graceful little creature or big creatures. And, um, yeah, they're beautiful to touch. We gave them food and things like that. And it's just amazing how how they've lived so long on this planet. And how um, getting destroyed. I remember when I went to the Singapore Zoo uh, years ago, it was about 20 years ago, and I went to a snake show. Mm. And um, this dude had a python wrapped around his neck. And, um, and you know, I was just thinking, yeah, that's 
maybe not a good idea. But no. <laughs> um, but anyway, it was a decent sized python, and uh, it, it, you know, it was a decent sized crowd too. And he's mm. talking, banging on, and whatever, whatever. And then, and then you're sort of looking what's happening, and you're going, mm, I'm not really sure, but I think that python is shitting all over you, buddy. And <laughs> um, and then, and because because he was, he sort of threw him sort of off. Mm. And as he did, he threw him onto the stage, and then the snake just escaped instantaneously off the front of the stage to the crowd. Yeah, and there was only a little (laughs) moat. There was only a little moat between the crowd and the snake. Uh, And the snake's like, I don't know, 10 feet, 12 feet. It's a bloody big python thing. And um, yeah, it just, it just, it just. It just came straight into the boat, straight into the crowd, and the <laughs> crowd just totally took off. It was just hilarious. And the screams on. Oh, yeah, lots of screaming. It was hilarious because I was right at the back. I'm going, yeah. oh, this, this is good. This is great. I love this show. Yes. This is part of awesome. the show. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, hilarious. Yeah. Um, I've got some more photos. So um, they've been able to um, increase the population to about 1,700. Oh, on this awesome. island. So here, here are some of the younger tortoises. Um, tortoise. Volu- tortoise. Tortoise. Here are some more photos. Um, yeah, there's over a dozen, if not two dozen or more, uh, to- tortoises in this image. There are some more volunteers and workers um, tagging and and identifying each tortoise and i think i've got one more i like this one because this one's showing um a a, a worker double stacking <laughs> the I tortoise is say, the young yeah, one. Double stack. <laughs> it's like a double stack uh, pancake <laughs> yeah i know it's, it's i don't know there's something funny about that i can't quite uh, give my head what yeah. it is but it is funny it's a funny image. yeah it's kind of hilarious when i saw it I went, right i've got to add that to the uh to the slideshow yeah um right. But yes, so the, there's uh, other wild animals or endangered species that they're um, also trying to reintroduce things like um, pink iguanas um, and other creatures. So um, it's all part of the Iniciativa Galapagos project. Um, where, Let's say that know, again. Uh, Iniciativa Galapagos. I just love hearing you say <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so they're, they're the group behind this project or, or the reintroduction of these um, uh, beautiful creatures um, on those uh, specific islands around um, the archipelago. So I'll put the, the article in the show notes so you can read more about it and other animals that they're trying to reintroduce as well. So, um, yeah, quite fascinating and, and, yeah, love that story. Beautiful stuff, absolutely sensational. I love nature calls, and uh, I quite like jokes, but I love nature calls. Mm. Oh, hang on, hang on. I forgot to add you back to the stage. Do you want to play that thing again? Here we go. I will. My brother-in-law was addicted to the hokey pokey. Rough now he's dying for. <laughs> <laughs> week. So, uh, why does Cinderella never win the Olympics? No, no idea. She has a pumpkin for a coach and runs away from the ball. Uh, <laughs> uh, dear, dear. Um, staying on the uh, Olympic slash uh, sporting theme, it's true that exercise helps with decision making. I went for a run this morning and decided never to do it again. (laughs) Uh, What did the hot dog say when it won a gold medal? No, no clue. I'm a wiener. (laughs) I like that one. Um, I started jogging today. I didn't want to, but the ice cream truck just didn't stop. (laughs) <laughs> very good i like it very good nice why can't tomatoes win races against lettuce at the summer games 
No, no clue. Because the lettuce are always ahead and the tomatoes can't catch up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, good one. Um, not on a sporting theme. Incorrectly is the only word that when spelt correctly is still spelt incorrectly. Not really a joke, but it's something to think about. No, no, no. I was just <laughs> I was trying to I was trying to put that in my brain and it, it didn't compute. Say that again. <laughs> okay. Incorrectly is the only word that when spelt correctly is still spelled incorrectly. Ah. So when you... <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> That's very good. I like it. That's very good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, why were the swimming elephants thrown out of the Olympics? No, no idea. Why did the elephants get thrown out? They couldn't keep their trunks up. Yeah. <laughs> um, what happens when a microscope crashes into a telescope? I go on. They kaleidoscope. Ah, very good. Very good. I should have, should have almost nearly got that, but uh, I did not. But that was very good. Uh, I think this is my last one, I believe. Okay. Uh, why is it so hot in a stadium after the Olympic Games are over? Sorry, say that again. Why is it so hot in a stadium after the Olympic Games are over? No, no clue. Because all the fans have left. Uh, of course. <laughs> I like that one. Um, okay. Um, I saw two huge black birds in my garden this morning and they were stuck together. Turns out they were Velcros. <laughs> That's very good. I like that. I like these that one, these yeah. are much better than the last time we did uh, jokes. <laughs> I think so. be <laughs> these were a lot, lot better. So, no, I, I enjoyed those. They were fun. They were very good. Enjoyed the show. Yeah, I thought good. that was fun as well. And I hope that you did too. As we've said before so many times on this show, the um, links are in the show notes and um, any slides, etc., or anything that we've shown on the show tonight, you will have the access to if you want it. Um, thanks very much for listening and downloading, etc., etc. Uh, we will be back next week, 8 p.m. ish, as we always say. Sometimes it's a longie, sometimes it's a shorty, but uh, we are heaps to uh, have a chat about tonight. As I say, I uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as we did bringing it to you. This always. is the Texter signing off this week. Thank you very much. Wentzy, as usual, magnificent work. I will see you next week. Good night. And love your work too, Kickstarter. Good night, everyone. Bye. The new blurt is brought to you by Wensi and Kickstarter, usually on a Tuesday evening. You can catch us on all the socials, as they say, the Blurt YouTube channel. We have a Twitter Blurt handle, and there is a Blurt Star Facebook page as well. So if you're interested in getting getting in touch, it's uh, blurtstar at gmail.com, and we will get back to you as soon as we can if you've got any questions. Until next week, there'll be another feed coming at you. Has been a Get Off The Glass production. It's brought to you by Wincy and Kickstarter.